Folks, I'm Chip, and today's video is going to be a short one and it's uh, pretty informative. All, all you professionals out there, you already know how to do this, but uh, I'm making this video mostly for homeowners who need to change the element or the uh, thermal fuse kit on their Whirlpool style dryers. Now, these dryers are estate, Whirlpool, Conservator, Maytag, uh, anything with a filter, the, the lint filter on the top right hand side of the machine. This uh, uh, repair is going to be for you. So anyway, let's get right to the video. All right, if you can hear over this rain, I bought this dryer and I'm starting to work on it. I already know that it needs an element, but I'll show you how I determine that. Anyway, to work on this, you have to take the uh, guard off it is hold on by one screw right there then there's three here three here and three here there's nine different screws to take this back plate off and we'll put it aside now you want to take your test set and you want to set it to ohms and that's that little symbol right there on this fluke you'll get an overload now you can set this fluke to audio or um, just to read ohms. And right now, because the rain is just pounding on this tin roof, I can't hear the audio that well. So I'm going to leave it on a visual readout. So when you get continuity, you will get that. So I want to test all these components. And you, you would disconnect one wire and that one's good that's a thermal fuse and the uh, cycling thermostat's good I'm going to change the cycling thermostat and everything this dryer I've worked on several times and it keeps blowing this element so anyway we can undo one of one thing in this whole circuit here goes back into uh, to the motor switch and we'll just take this one loose now that has pretty much isolated everything so you can find where this one comes goes to the timer you can undo that one because it goes up and this one goes down and you can go from here to here and test all of these components at once and see we have a break in it now if I I know that this goes through the element and back out through here and up here so if I test this one I'll probably get continuity and I do because this component's good and this component's good, but this component's bad. And the way I can alternate recheck it is put it on one of these spade plugs and this one. It's bad. And you can test to see if it's grounded, it's not. So we know that the element's bad. So I want to reconnect this while I'm here because. Well, I'm going to change all those components because I don't want to sell this and then it comes back to me because of the element. Because I think this element's being blown because this component's bad. Now, where are my riches? Well, let me find my wrench and I'll work on this. Start taking this off. I think the rain has subsided enough that you can hear me now. We will remove this uh, element. And I don't know why we weren't getting Grounded to the frame because that's showing up with stuck on it. 
but yeah this is dead and you can see it was a lack of airflow that did this because of this or uh, it uh, actually could be it wasn't cutting off getting way too hot so we need this we don't actually need this because we're going to change it let's change those components too because I'm going to resell that and I don't want it to come back to me here we go a thermal fuse kit now the one thing in that kit that you really don't need to change is this piece right here because the dryer wouldn't even come on unless it's a gas dryer it wouldn't even come on if that component was bad that is a thermal fuse but let's take this second thermostat off Okay, let me explain this cycling thermostat to you. This cycling thermostat uh, will click on and off. It will click off when it reaches 152 degrees Fahrenheit. And it will come back on, I think, 20 degrees below that. You can, you can see the, uh, let's see. All right, it cycles off at 155, and its range is, if I can read that, looks like 25. So at 155 it cycles off, and at 135 it'll cycle back on. So the range is 25 degrees, and the limit is 155. So 155 off it cools back down 25 degrees which is 135 is it or 130 130 it cools back down to 130 and it clicks back on now the reason this thing has four prongs on it these two uh, prongs will heat, there's a little coil in there will heat up and and uh, cause this thing to click off at a lower temperature than what's blowing through here. And so these two are connected to your temperature control switch. If you want hotter or colder, uh, this uh, will cycle a um, a uh, little coil, a heat coil inside, which uh, heats that up to 155 degrees before uh, the actual temperature here is. So that's how that works. And if this thing isn't working, it won't cut the your uh, element off, and it may get too hot. Now this is a thermal fuse. This is the, the fail safe. If the element gets too hot, like 309 degrees is what this one's rated at. I think, I'm pretty sure. 309. Yeah, 309 degrees. This one blows, and it's a single. It's a single blow uh, circuit breaker. So once it blows, it blows. It's it, uh, you have to replace it. Now some people will take these and they'll say, well I can slap it on the surface and it'll reset. It will, but that, that concave little piece of metal that expands and, and blows it, it will reset, but once it, once it gets that hot, it's, 
it's compromised you need to replace it you can slap it and reset it but it's no it's never going to be as good as uh, to begin with now this is what you call your working thermostat its limit is 250 degrees and it's got an 80 degree range so at 250 degrees it will cut the element off and then when it cools cools down 80 degrees from 250 you do the math then it'll cycle back on to be I think 170 degrees will come back on now this They don't make these like they used to make them. There we go. So you put that back on your new one. And reinstall your element. And we'll go ahead and put the wires back up. All right. Now we don't need to change this one because it's working. If it didn't work, it doesn't control temperature. It just, it's a safety feature that if your um, machine gets too hot I don't know if there's a rating on it or not I'm not sure what the the blow temperature is it's not much above two hundred degrees probably so we put our second thermostat back in a new one If you're worried about which wire goes where, don't worry. This is uh, an AC system, meaning alternating current. It goes one way, then it goes the next 60 times a second. Now if it was a, a direct current uh, machine, which I don't know of any, it might matter then. And this thermal fuse, new thermal fuse, uh, what do I do with that screw? There it is.
there we go now let's check all our connections and we can put our we will put our um, backpack on here's a thermal fuse that I will keep uh, all the other fuses so that I just need one I don't know where it is <coughs> let's put our back back on here Looking all over from my stuff. I can get these corners. Everything seems to line up better that way. Of course, this one seems to be fitting perfectly. guard on now I'm going to paint this but probably not today on account of the weather unless the sun comes out which may happen I've got some service calls to make. And that's how I fix that machine. Uh, I don't show it on the video, but I plugged it in, tested it, everything worked fine. I, uh, it, later on that day, it quit raining. I was able to sand it, but I wasn't able to uh, paint the machine. But I painted it the next day and sold it almost as soon as the paint dried on it. But if you're into flipping machines, this is an easy fix. You can get a lot of uh, dryers that have problems with thermal fuses uh, are elements and people just decide to replace them instead of uh, fixing them anyway thanks for watching give me a thumbs up and chippy's out